Now, they do say that you should never return to the scene of the crime, but I've actually come back to Surrey to see John, who had the problem with the heat pump, and we interviewed him. A lot of people watch that video, and a lot of people said, why don't you get Adam from Heat Geeks to have a look at the installation? Because we're fairly sure that it's not the heat pump, it's the installation. So I'm gonna go and see what Adam says. He's already here with John, he beat me here, and as I walked down the road, I could hear this strange noise. So even if Adam manages to sort everything else out, we still got this problem of a noise. People say heat pumps aren't noisy. Well, some of them are. So let's go and say hello. Hello, chaps. Hello. How, are you? <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, good, yeah? Good. Good. yeah, yeah, good. Good to see you again. So you've already bonded you two, have you? Yep, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, we're on yeah, side. Yeah. Good. <laughs> now look, side. just before we start, I just want to say one thing because we did this video, this initial video, where I came and interviewed John and he told us all the problems he'd had with the heat pump. And when I started looking at the comments, there were some really nasty, what I consider to be nasty comments there. People saying, well, he's stupid. It's his fault because he didn't do the research. He's not educated. Oh, honestly, all sorts of nonsense. And so what these people are saying is that you've got to be more expert than the expert when you order a heat pump. And that to me is madness. You should just be able to go to a heat pump installer and say, I want a heat pump in my house and, and leave it to them. But it seems that's not the case. It seems a lot of people are saying that you have to really know your stuff. In fact, you have to be a geek in order to own a heat pump. So Adam, I've got that off my chest. <laughs> What do you think? I totally agree. Uh, we actually say in our company there's been um, no uh, customer has had a heat pump installed yet because by the time they have it installed, they end up being an expert because they have to figure out what's wrong, they're taught heat loss. Yeah. Totally agree. And that's because the training wasn't there and that's the thing that we try and address. So and they can't, and nobody's got any confidence in, in yeah. the, the, the system. And I said, you know, that it was grants that were really just pushing this thing because you've got a load of companies come in who just want to grab all the grants and then they're gone. As in John's case, they went bankrupt shortly after installing yeah. the thing. So it's a mess, isn't it? And I know you're trying I, to sort I'd it I'd agree. I, again, I'd agree. I think there's been uh, most of the companies that come in uh, to solar, double glazing, etc., etc., were there not for the right reasons. They weren't perhaps potentially from that background. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of roofing companies that move into solar, that move into heat pump, etc., etc. Heat pumps are a heating engineer's thing, yeah. uh, and that's yeah. who should be doing the job. Yeah. Um, uh, but in, in, in fairness and defence to them, there wasn't the training available. Like yeah. the information just isn't out there and that's kind of our mission to investigate this and find out what needs to be done differently. Yeah. What is the takeaway message here as far as you're concerned? Where should they go for the right advice and the right product? Training is improving a lot currently right now. So of course I'm gonna say our training's the yeah. best. Yeah. Uh, but the new training courses coming out, low temperature design, um, course uh, that Sibsi have released. Uh, there's a few low temperature design courses. That's where the training needs to be. System design, not the box outside. The box outside is a sealed box that you connect into. No one needs to know about that. If you get a heating engineer who knows about heating design and a refrigerant engineer, and they both install a heat pump on a wet system, the guy that knows about heating only will do a much better job. It's all about what you're connecting to that box. You're a customer, you're looking for a heat pump. Where should you go to save John's experience? Well, so we've recently developed a whole load of consumer videos that consumers can watch, much more easy to understand. But the guys that we've, and girls that we've trained up, they're trained up, we fully trust them, support them to install the best possible systems. They know what they're doing and they can give the advice that poor John here hasn't had from the beginning. So where do they get hold of them? Heatgeek.com. Right, and that's got a list of your installers? Yeah, we've got a map, find a heat geek, uh, just type in find a heat geek on, on Google and you can find uh, heat geeks all around your area essentially. And they're, they know what they're doing, they're going to give you the right product for the right... Yeah, okay. they'll, and they're not manufacturer bias, they'll specify a system for your property that suits your property, that works in the best way mm. and gives you the best returns on your investment importantly, because uh, this has to be fiscal first. It has to be cheaper to run than gas and that's what we're gonna do. So what we found here is he's got a, uh, John's got a high temperature system. Um, I need to do a couple of calculations to see if he needs a high temperature system. So high temperature systems have a heat pump in them and then a heat pump strapped to the side. So it boosts up the temperature and then boosts it again. Essentially there's twice as much to go wrong. It's for <laughs> older properties, uh, churches, stuff like that. 
probably don't need that here. I don't know that for sure though without doing some maths. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that's the first kind of thing, that the reason why you're getting lower COPs because it's doing the same thing twice essentially. So is, is it not as efficient, a high temperature system? No, um, uh, they, they are less efficient. There's just a lot more going on in them in general. So is it taking more electricity to run it? Yeah, exactly. No, that explains a so lot. We, really, we want to be getting um, efficiency or COP of 3.5, so every kilowatt we I put wish, in, 3.5 wish. out. Well, <laughs> I, we could probably get you there. Um, and I mean, just looking at the system uh, immediately, this is the first thing I'm going to notice and point out, as I've said previously, you don't necessarily need buffers. And if you can avoid having one, your system will be more efficient. Uh, if you have a buffer, you get circulation and water mixing inside the buffer. This is basically a big tube, empty tube. And the heat pump pumps into it and then goes back to the heat pump and it pumps out the other side of the system. If you have water mixing in there, because the pumps aren't exactly the same size, you get this kind of distortion effect, which means the heat pump has to run a lot hotter than it should do. So if you got rid of this, um, uh, the system would immediately run better. Now, the reason it has it in is because you've got quite a big system and we need to put a bigger pump on the system, which is why this thing's in here. However, our heat pump doesn't have a built-in pump. We could just connect this directly to the system. So typically with a normal heat pump system, you would have a heat pump inside the internal box in the house, uh, a pump that circulates water potentially to a buffer. If that's not enough, big enough pump to get around the system, you have to use a buffer and then pump away with a secondary pump on the other side to reach the furthest radiators. I know you had this problem previously and yeah. they've come in and put these extra bits. Um, because you don't have an internal pump in there, that's why you've got this pump here, we could just run this pump to, to circulate your entire system. Then we don't need a buffer. Then you don't get this mixing effect and this distortion that I was talking about. So that would be my first recommendation. Get rid of this. And, uh, and, and that should help things. Adam, can I just ask you yep. at this point, that buffer was put in because he was getting icing up. You yeah. know, what that's doing, that buffer is right. returning some of that heat yeah. to the heat pump to stop the icing up. Yeah. If you take that buffer out, mm. is he back to square one with the icing up? I think there's an issue with the icing up here. There's something either not working right and or overzoning of the system can create this problem. So we advise to use open loop systems. Open loop system is less zoning in the system, basically. If you zone down too much, when it tries to de-ice, it's like trying to pull maybe heat out of one radiator to de-ice the thing and it struggles. So you have to put in a buffer. Um, this is kind of like a patch or a plaster. It's not fixing the actual problem. problem. One of the main things I've noticed is this whole thing is fixed temperature. Weather compensation has not been used. Whether you're heating with your gas boiler or, um, uh, or a heat pump, you want to try and use as much weather compensation as possible. So the 45 degrees that this is set to for um, winter, in, at minus two say for example, you don't need that when it's 12 degrees outside. It might only need to be 30 degrees around your radiators. And when you do that, the compressor just don't need to work as hard and it can be a lot higher efficiency. So the heat pump might work at lower efficiencies in the winter, but that should be made up for by the rest of the year. And then the average of the two uh, should come out at above 350% efficiency. That's our target, our minimum target. So um, I'm gonna try and have to figure out how to crack this safe because <laughs> uh, I've never used this controller before and it's not user friendly in the slightest. So, um, no, that's so right. Weather compensation is out there, is it? So, uh, the, that sensor, will, uh, the sensor is outside. I don't is it? know that it's got a sensor outside. I'm going to have to assume so. I'm going to have to do yeah. a little bit more digging. If it hasn't, I would. Yeah. Uh, that could be a quite a cheap upgrade that could massively improve yeah. things, to be fair. Well, I, I, the way it works, I didn't think it had a sensor because, you know, I'm having to defrost it at plus three degrees when right. the weather is wet. You do get frosting at that temperature exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has yeah. to know that to defrost though. So there is a sensor in, in the unit. Sometimes they need an additional outside sensor though. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know what So how is it defrosting? It's using energy that it's already created or heat that it's already created, sending it back to the yes. unit to defrost it. Exactly. Whoa. Oh shit, <laughs> Dylan. That was the main force. <laughs> Quick, where's the super glue? <laughs> I, I need to crack this safe uh, and, and perhaps I'll try and adjust this weather compensation curve. That, however, is only going to give you more efficiency. It's not necessarily going to get warmer inside. We need to know why we've got it warmer, uh, why it's not warm enough inside. And there are a few uh, reasons why that might be. One, as I said, the buffer that's creating this mixing, any point where the flow connects to the return and could create this mixing means you're losing energy, heat energy right. as you go along. Here's point one that happens. The next point that happens is this um, uh, um, bypass valve here. Uh, if you've got an open loop system where you've at least got one emitter open at all times minimum, you don't need a bypass. Um, uh, so 
The way you control a heat pump, obviously, as I said before, is that you try and keep as many zones or at least one zone open at all times so you can allow the heat pump to let go of the energy. If you've got somewhere for the path of water to go, you shouldn't ever have a bypass. And if it is open at all, and you've got a big pump there, we could easily push it open, it will bypass back on itself and it will cause the pump to uh, sit back, not put as much energy into the house, and then you're cold. Because that's a smart pump. And yes. is that a pressure-operated bypass? On so it, that, that, will have, that will have multiple settings on it. It's on minimum setting at the moment, which qu makes me question why it's so big. Um, but uh, um, that would probably be the right size if we got rid of this buffer, which yeah. I'd probably advise. The third point of mixing uh, of this water and this energy loss is here, this blending valve. So if we're already creating low temperature heat from a, a heat pump, we don't need to then turn the heat pump temperature up to then blend it back down again. <laughs> yeah. We can just create the temperature heat we need there and just use it directly there. So get rid of, and then we've got another pump again, using electricity for no reason whatsoever. We'll just use that massive pump over there that we've got in setting one is, is more than enough. So Adam, what you're saying is get rid of all that thermal mixing thing, yep. get rid of that pump, yep. connect straight in, yes. straight in well flow, Float to float, yeah, whichever yeah, way around. Yeah, whichever. yeah exactly. Yeah. It's so, just another So that point becomes like a radiator, if you like. Yeah. That's just, yeah. So exactly. all those are open. You don't need to zone those. You don't need to have those. You, you going can. On uh, so what we advise is you can use thermostats and use them as temperature limiters. So say if you've got lots of glass in your kitchen or something like that, yeah. you might want to use it to, to cap the temperature. But how you should be achieving the internal temperature is through setting your weather compensation curve correctly. And that's getting the lowest possible flow temperature to the house mm. while staying comfortable. And that's how we get our efficiencies right Do you up. need this motorised valve? No, here? that's just get there for that no as well. I, it, that, the reason that's in there is because this all, and the reason this is here is because this comes as a pack. Yeah, I know. Yeah, You've yeah. already got, a, um, I know you know, obviously, mm, but sure. the, you know, the uh, people, they're, they're putting at different stages and just things have been clunked together without consideration mm. of the effect of what else is on the mm. system. So um, yeah, this is all, and the beauty is we're putting less in here. It should be cheaper, it should be mm, less complicated. Yeah, because yeah. that's, um, that's 80 quid. Well, something, that's, yeah, exactly. That's 100 odd. And, know, it's and, like... and, and it's circulating using electricity when it doesn't, yeah. doesn't need to. <laughs> so, so far, actually, what you're saying, Adam, is just take stuff out. Yeah. Which is amazing. I thought, yeah. we was gonna get, I thought you were going to say to John, oh, you've got to spend money on this, you've got to add yeah. this, add that, add the other. What you're saying is it's way too complicated, it's too much stuff in here, get rid of it, go back to basics. Now, would you say that in all cases when you've got a heat pump, you don't need this mixing valve, this manifold? Um... Pretty much, yeah. It would yeah. be extreme cases like churches or something like that where you need um, the heat pump to produce above 60, 55 degree flow temperature, for example. Yeah. The reason this caps out at 55 degrees here um, is because you don't want that high flow temperature for the floors. You're aware that can crack flooring, yeah, etc. Yeah. You've got that problem here. Um, uh, th this shouldn't be set above 50, 55 degree flow temperature. That's fine for most homes. Even solid brick uh, homes, believe it or not, are probably yeah. fine on that flow temperature. Yeah. When you said this is a high temperature unit, yeah, is it capable of being run at low temperatures? Yes, it is. Oh, it okay. is, but so there's still it's because it's it, then it's doing something it's not designed for. It's just not as efficient yeah. at doing that. You may yeah. as well have the single stage compression. Uh, is, uh, right, it's a high temperature unit because it's got those two heat pumps basically in yes. one. Yeah, yes. it's not because it's got different refrigerant in all. Uh, so that's how that's how they work. Is they use different refrigerants that are optimised for the range that it works oh, okay, in. Right. So it, it it lifts it up to A with, you know, A temperature with whatever refrigerant, and then the next set with another oh, okay. set of refrigerants that has different uh, thermal yeah, properties. Yeah, yeah. So, so if anybody um, tops it up, they're going to do the right one for the right. Exactly. Yeah, and like it's just unnecessary. Like yeah. all of it just needs simplifying. Um, Hot water? Right, this isn't the most efficient tank at all. Um, so my... Um, uh, a, hot no, water. that sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could get this tons more efficient, don't get me wrong. So my heat pump at home, you can see mine on Live Energy Monitor. If you've seen it, uh, openenergymonitor.org. It's second in the league table of Scots for the nation <laughs> at the moment. Um, it, really? Yeah. really? Are there medals? And that? it's a hundred year old house, so it's not bad. No, no. Um, so uh, mine's got a huge coil inside it, six yeah. meters, mm. massive. Oh, you know, right. it's, uh, yeah. it was about fourteen hundred quid, so it's yeah. a relatively yeah. expensive one. This yeah, one's yeah. probably about nine hundred quid, grand, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, this one's got about a meter coil in it, which means because there's less chance for the the heat to sort of escape into the surrounding sort of water, mm. the heat pump has to run hotter to get it up to temperature. Well, You've not been running the heat pump this off the heat pump, though, no, right? no, 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 using that's the gas, the gas that's which right. is probably the right thing to do, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. 
Um, but if you did have, a, well, even with this cylinder, we could probably be comparable to the gas well, boiler it, running costs. Would you separate the gas boiler out from this? And uh, you know, if, if John says, okay, I'm going to carry on running out from the gas boiler, would you then make sure the yeah. circuits are completely separate? You can do, so but that we're not using the heat pump at all on this. Or would you? You you, you could do, but um, you, uh, why would you want to spend? I, I think we could make this cheaper than gas. Especially if we use time of use tariff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit sceptical. Well, yeah, that's of course. I mean, yeah. and rightfully so. And I yeah, do yeah. not blame anyone for being sceptical because you know most of the installations out there aren't very good at all mm. so uh, yeah. this is just the journey and this is an immature uh, industry that's having to mature quickly uh, and I just think we're probably you know the, fr the forefront of that. It's interesting you should say that about it being immature because we get loads of comments on the videos yeah. as you've seen from people in all across Europe yeah. you know Scandinavia so like John said Finland seems to be the one everyone says you guys, these have been around for 30 years, 40 years, 18 something, first heat pump or whatever. Yeah. So why is it an immature industry? Um, so the heat pumps themselves are totally capable because they've been used in Finland, etc., etc. Mm. It's the implementation, the understanding of how the technology that works that's uh, in, in its infancy in our industry because we're used to taking the condensing gas boilers that the Europeans were running at low temperature and making condense yeah. and putting them on old on off, you know, uh, Victorian style old fashioned systems. Mm -hmm. So we never upgraded the industry knowledge and we didn't really need to because no one was checking how efficient their gas boiler was. No one cared and they were happy with their, their, their combi. Now things are changing. We're taking a second look and going, hold on a minute, were we doing right things right at all for the last 20 years? And actually the answer is no. OK, one more question. Sorry, I don't want to slow you down here, but I just feel I've got to cover these points because I know they come in the comments. Yeah. You get loads of people saying you're wasting your time with an air to water unit. Why don't you just go air to air? Because they're a lot cheaper. There's not mm. this complication. You just whack them in. Their air conditioning units basically run in reverse. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why don't we Yeah, no, this? I mean, that is a viable option, totally. Um, is it as efficient or not? Um, I, I don't think the efficiency is quite there. Uh, air to air is hard to measure because you've got to measure the volume of air passing through the unit and the temperature rise, so it's a hard thing to find the efficiency. It looks like they, they can uh, perform on average around about a scope of 3.5. For our systems, that's the minimum SCOP level. We're actually potentially maybe going to introduce a guarantee for efficiencies, but more about that another time. Uh, the average efficiency of our air to water systems is for a SCOP of 4.2. Now, that, they are more expensive still, uh, but the, the, here's the other reasons you might not. With an air to air, you can't heat your hot water. You've still got to heat your hot water somehow. So you're going to have to either buy another heat pump cylinder or leave a gas boiler in, or use direct electric, which is three times less efficient. Yeah, we've got, but, we've got but, a bit of solar here as well. Yeah. But he's he's got solar. Yep. Well, all I'm all I'm. Oh yeah, no, no. There, all I'm thinking is where you should, yeah. could and should. Okay. So all I'm thinking, Adam, is that if somebody's faced with having some heat pumps. Yes. Supposing they've only got electricity coming in, direct electricity. Yes. They, they may be in a flat. Wouldn't they mm. be better just go air to air, forget all this stuff, and just get an immersion heater? Well, even for, better than that, you just have an electric shower. Yeah, often like flats, uh, air to air is great for flats. Yeah, um, it's not it's not one size fits all ever. So are you, your no heat guys, are, are they are they open think, to doing air think, to air or uh, not? Are they they're all... not trained up in that. They're they're more air to water. That we may move there eventually, or they may move there as individual engineers. You know, we don't control them. We want try and support you know independent companies. We're not about uh, making them wear our t-shirts or anything like that. We just kind of assist them where we can, so it's kind of up to them. Uh, air to air is totally a viable option and should be looked at by everyone. Um, not everyone is going to want cassettes in their Victorian house. I didn't want it, Mrs. definitely didn't want it, so there's a few other nuances to that. But as always, there's all these variables, there's no one answer for anything, it's always, there's no panacea, what suits you, what suits your lifestyle, etc, etc. Okay, but it, I think from your point of view, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your business, but mm. I think from your point of view, you ought to give people the, the whole, and not just be in the hydraulic camp. I, 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 to be honest, I think we, so we are looking at doing that, and we're also looking at other options like the Zeb boiler, the Tapio, Tapio Zeb boiler. Yeah, what yeah. we want to do is decarbonize homes. However you do that, whether you need a battery with an electric boiler or whatever, who cares? Yeah. We okay. just want to turn off the gas. That's what I was trying to do five, six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Are you yeah. trying to find anyone who knew anything about it? John's heart was in the right place. When he started this endeavor, it was in the right place, and it seems to me that at every stage he's just got kicked for, for trying to do the right thing. And we know we have arguments over whether carbon, you know, the whole argument about whether carbon thing is a scam or so on. But John believes in it. He believes he wanted to do something for himself and future generations, but 
this is the result of it. Um, yeah, and, and more so, he put his money where his mouth is. So yeah. really, he did care and want to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what you would have done six years ago, to be quite honest. I don't think you would have ended up in a, a, any different situation. Cause no. He keeps there's very, no, no, well, there's very little out there. And even yeah. today, trying to get people out to, to yeah. work on it is just really, really tough. Yeah, that is something that needs to be worked on right now. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in no way here like trying to convince anyone, don't yeah. worry, all problems are solved. We've got a solution that we're trying to scale and train more people up. But the, the problem is that we haven't got enough installers doing this job properly. Not that the technology fundamentally doesn't work. There's a perfect pl place and situation for this type of heat pump that could work. This isn't, maybe this isn't it. I've got to do a few calculations, as I said. But there is a, t uh, a heat pump that would have worked perfectly in here and been much cheaper than your gas boiler to run. Well, what this problem he's got with old house, new house, he's got nine inch, no cavity yeah, in there, and, and this is cavity walls. Yeah. Is that a problem or not? Um, because when you do the heat calculations. Yeah. I mean, it's something you have to bear in mind. So the efficiency of the system is going to be set by his, um, at the inefficient part of the house. Okay. And then you just kind of leak heat into the, uh, the newer part of the house, if that makes sense. Mm. However, since you've kind of been in this journey, they've been in chucked some big chunky old radiators oh, yeah. in. Huge. From, from <laughs> a, I mean, they're huge. I, I've, yeah. I would, I've not put many jobs in site radiators that size. They're big enough to do this house. N no problem at all. That's an underfloor heating size yeah. output. So, um, I, I mean, you know. just to correct you on one point, the, yeah. the, the house has been warm enough. Right. The problem is the cost of heating it to get it warm enough. That's good to hear. Because then I might just be able to tweak your weather compensation curve and we can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> and stop the noise as well. Adam, are you saying that these pipes, because, you know, I've looked at Simon with Urban Plumbers oh, yeah. videos, he's put in them. 32 mil copper pipes and stuff, you know. Yeah, so um, typically the heat pump comes with a pump in size inside the unit that you can't replace. So you need to make sure that it's man enough for the system or that the system has big enough bore pipe work so it's not doesn't put too much pressure on that pump, to, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. This doesn't come with a pump. You've spe or a <coughs> massive pump's been specified, so you can have almost any size pipe work. It will foot force it through. Sure. I, well, pumps don't use that much energy, so it's not going to tank your efficiency mm -hmm. too much. Um, uh, I, I, this is 28 mil. It looks slightly on the low side, to be honest, um, but I don't think it's going to be like a, a game changing problem at all. Um, uh, in, in reality, I think the first, the, the only two main things are weather compensation. That's like 101 really of heat pump installations. And we probably don't need the buffer and you're, you're going to be 90 percent there mm. okay just for our viewers the ones that have stayed with us <laughs> who <laughs> are awake <laughs> who we really want to know you know they don't yeah. want to avoid what john yeah. went through yeah so can you just give us in very brief yes. what weather compensation is weather compensation is where your heat output of your heat pump is dictated by the temperature of the air outside Typically, the temperature of a house is fixed. You either want it around about 21 during the day, around about 18, 19 at night. The variable is the outside temperature. And as that drops into the winter, your flow temperature from the heat pump will go up. And that ratio between the outside temperature and your flow temperature is known as a weather compensation curve. The more you insulate your house, the more shallow you can have that curve. So say when it's zero degrees outside, uh, you might only need 30 degree flow temperature. If you've got an older house with um, uh, uh, solid brick, you might need 45, 50 degrees maybe when it's zero outside, then you'd have a more se steep weather compensation curve. So it's all about having the lowest possible flow temperature at all times. Heat pumps use this, but this gives massive savings on gas condensing on gas anything, boilers as on well. On anything. Anything. I, 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 old boilers, a little bit maybe, uh, but they can, you know, rust up because, you know, some yeah. of the flues, etc. Mm, mm. um, but specifically condensing boilers, you can extract that latent gas that you could be chucking out the flue. So it's not a heat pump thing. You have to run heat pumps this way. This is heating full stop. This is heating mm. efficiency. Mm. That's why we teach uh, system design, not how heat pumps work. How heat pumps work don't matter for efficiency, really. Mm. Um, it's all about getting these fine, you know, the controls finely tuned and having the, the layout. Of the and can you right. tweak the weather compensation then? You, this is what you're talking about. You're going to make Yeah, so that curve. So um, there's no curve on there. It just says go to 45 degrees all year round, even though you don't need it. And then what you do is you set a foot point and a, and a high temperature point. So I'm going to go to minus two. I'm going to guess this house probably needs 50 degrees at minus two. That's one end done. And then when it's 20 degrees outside and you have your heating off, I'll put that at 20 degrees flow temperature, which means it doesn't need to turn on because it will be 20 degrees anyway. And then you do a straight line between the two. It's actually a curve slightly, but uh, hence the name. Uh, and and that's, it's just referencing that, saying, what's the temperature outside? Go up to that temperature, go along, that's your flow temperature. It's 
pretty simple, really. Mm, pretty simple for you, mate, but the clue's in the name here, isn't it? OK, I've got a, re a rebuttal to that. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas compared to a normal system, you have an on-off thermostat that clicks on because you need heat in the house. It goes to check whether the timer's ready for the heat. OK, timer's going to pass on the power, sends it to the heat, heat source. Heat source goes up to temperature, full temperature, overheat cycle, on, off, on, off. Timer, uh, either timer or thermostat turn off. Like, that's complicated as well. Yeah. This is colder it is, warmer radiators. It is more simple. Right, so can I go and show you what I found outside? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. God, it's warmer out here than it is in there. <laughs> I see pumps for you. Now, as you can see out here, heat pumps are really quiet, I told you. So, um, there's, I mean, as soon as I walked around the corner, I pointed out to you, there's a very obvious issue here and why this is so noisy. Um, fan bearings are built to be level. Uh, if they go out of level, they wear down very quickly and get very loud very quickly. This base is, this is not a base, a heat pump base. You've got a loose gravel here that's shifting away over time and a solid base here. And if you have a look down the back, Dylan, this whole thing's leaning towards the wall. So essentially the bearings are, are thrown off kilter and that's made it loud over time. That's why A, you're going to hear noising when it, uh, clipping noise when it ices up and B, the bearings are going to start wearing down and getting rusty and you, you can hear that grinding noise. That's where they're basically just the friction sort of making them rub against each other. If this was level, I can't guarantee it would be absolutely silent, but it does have to be level for a start it's, it's, and it has to be serviced. It was quieter. Is that a flexible yeah. pipe in there? Inside there, do you think or not? Oh, or was that um, solid copper? I, no, I'd, I'd assume that that would be copper. That's, that's rigid. That's, oh, it's been screwed on. Yeah, don't worry. That's yeah, right, I think that bit looks fine, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Just if, no. This, if it this, this, wasn't, this, this will be flexible copper, actually. This will be because this yeah. is refrigerated. So, so what I'm saying to you is, we should just be able to do that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So, well, that's a, we did. We tried that. The bearings are already gone. Okay. Yeah. The bear, right. so I'd the love to fix it just I mean, by going like that. Nice, <laughs> yeah, I tried doing it. 200 quid, please. Thank <laughs> you. I, I gave it a go. This is the north side of the building. Is it going to be an advantage to putting it around there? No, the air temperature around here is the same around the other side. Um, so if you, if you take a, a point in the shade of the temperature of the air there, the air is going to be the same temperature. It doesn't use the radiant heat from the sun. It uses the air temperature, which is constantly moving. So it doesn't matter really where you put it. What's not great is the fact it's kind of enclosed. You can get recirculation sometimes, yeah. so it produces cold air that could be sucked back in. Yeah. That can create a spiral effect. I wouldn't say this is the worst. It's pretty open that side. I'm not sure this distance is uh, according to their manufacturing instructions. I I'd like to check that. And also this distance is very short. Yeah. If this is too short, it, it has to power the fan more to suck the air in. So, you I know, the, the, I mean, looking at the base, I already know that it wasn't cared for that much when it was put in anyway. Um, so I don't know that they went to that sort of detail of uh, looking at yeah. clearances. But That's interesting you should say that because Dakin in their literature yeah. say you're better off on the south side. Yeah, I don't you know, know why they say that. And, it's not and thing. the other thing is I've fitted heat pump swimming pools have been my main oh, yeah, thing yeah, doing yeah. swimming yeah. pools. Yeah. And I've tried to avoid this because they say that you need a good flow yes. at the back. Yeah. So what I've done in swimming pools, like yeah. they've got a nice patio sun lounges, yeah, all yeah. Thing, I've stuck it that way around yeah, yeah, yeah. so that it gets a flow. And then they've gone, oh, we don't want that yeah, because yeah. it's taking up all this lovely yeah, room. No. <laughs> you know, so yeah. stick it back it's a battle the you wall. have to have with so, a customer. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, 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 almost, to my mind, would be better if the fan came in there and came up there. You well, know? yeah, and they do do units um, that take in the air from all sides and blow it upwards. Yeah, uh, could, you know, yeah. and it, there's, there's all sorts of different variations. It looks like this is the way. That because the other going. thing, going back to the swimming pools, is that when this thing is on, it's blasting out ice cold air. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. even in the summer, yeah. because it's working, obviously, yeah, yeah. they're sitting on their, yeah. their sun loungers yeah. and they're... Got yeah. 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 if you've got pool. a swimming pool hopefully you've got a big garden you can tuck it away somewhere well you know um, some people but anyway they go in the swimming pool to get warm basically <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing but look yeah i mean the, the noise thing so the, there's two things as i said that it's not level so that's going to be a thing but these do need service it's a moving part those yeah, bearings yeah. need oiling they need looking after and it doesn't sound like i mean i don't think they would have been because whoever would have come out to have done that would have shown you it wasn't level and it wasn't fully supported. Yeah. This has just been lumped in, basically. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah. I've got to say, John, if I were your neighbour, 
putting up with this, you know. I wouldn't no, put absolutely. It. That's why it's yeah. been switched off for yeah. so long. Yeah. I wouldn't put up with it. It's an absolute yeah. racket. Yeah. And, and I think we've got a problem here, haven't we? Because yeah. if people don't get on with their neighbours, and some people don't, let's face it, and this yeah. becomes the, the yeah. point of contention, yeah. and they're not cooperating, they're going, well, I've paid all this money, I'm going to run my heat pump, you better get some ear defenders or earplugs. Yeah. You know, you can see people falling out. That's right. And, and so the, the, the way around that is we learn how to put these things in properly and how to service them properly. They should not sound anything like this if it was, you know, that is, that is obviously something wrong with it, you know. Can we go back inside somewhere slightly warmer? Yeah. <laughs> and quieter. My quiet. jumper and quieter, yeah. <laughs> I will say that if a plumber gets wet, it's a bad day. And uh, I thought I'd turn this one off, but there's still a fair amount of pressure on it. Don't come in, John, whatever you do, because I'm jumping it, which is basically when we do the whole job live, yeah? So wish me luck. Oh, oh fuck. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the ceiling. I'll tell you what, there's some pressure coming through there from somewhere, isn't there? There we is a lot. We've done all the isolating valves that, on it. That, that is an unusual amount of pressure, I would say. And uh, I don't know where it's coming from because we've turned every isolating valve off to the tank and it's still... <laughs> so, so far we've smashed the cup, <laughs> flooded the house. See you in court. <laughs> So, quick sort of summary, um, we've just swapped a valve, a bit of water came out, which is actually quite helpful, because yeah. uh, now we know that the system's absolutely chocker with uh, glycol. Yeah. We don't recommend glycol. Uh, yeah, thanks, Roger. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's loads of glycol in it. Glycol um, kind of hinders the ability for the water to absorb and carry heat around. So that's something else that could be adjusted. In reality, um, I think the state of your heat pump isn't great. I'd say you either need a bit of a rebuild in there and or I would just probably go new heat pump. Personally, it's quite a lot of work. So uh, I don't think there's gonna be a, oh, we'll just put on, even if I do turn on the weather compensation, that racket out there is not fair on your neighbor. No, that's right. So uh, that, that's, that's the fundamental thing that needs fixing. So it's, it's only lasted about five, five or six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Compared yeah. to the boiler. Which, yeah, that was when here. you think about that per year, what seven grand for a heat pump yeah 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 five years and then and then it's been more expensive to run the gas it's yeah. just a shocking shockingly poor installation yeah. it didn't need to be that way though yeah. they just needed to make a proper base so it stayed level and then it could have been serviced every year you wouldn't be anywhere near this noise level i don't think you need this high temperature unit anyway i'm going to probably recommend some stuff to you maybe via an email or something and you can make that decision if you want to just switch back to gas or not uh, and we'll kind of let everyone know we're doing uh, what you're doing but just to summarize there was no weather compensation. It was always going to have rubbish efficiencies. Um, the piping arrangements weren't great. You didn't need to have a buffer, really. Um, the zoning and timing, I don't really think, was set up in the right way to get the most out of the system. Um, uh, and then you had all these points of extra sort of mixing at the blending valves and a, uh, uh, a, a bypass valve in there, which you don't really need, and lowering the overall they, efficiency. They became so, redundant. It was very, now we know it's very basic kind of stuff. And it's all stuff that's much more simple and easy to install and understand yeah. when you come and yeah. service these things. You've got all this extra stuff to, it looks like a nightmare. Actually, the best installs are very simple. Yeah, Flow yeah. and return pipe, N not very many zones, not loads of wiring. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll make some recommendations for our email, which will basically summarise that, and uh, I'll be interested to know which way you <laughs> want to go. So, um, <laughs> Simon from Urban Plumbers, yes. he was expressing an interest in coming along and fixing all this stuff. Now, if that heat pump hadn't had those noisy valves, if it had been a better heat pump, I'm going to say, uh, then... It's what Simon would have had to do is very little work, really. I would say so. Weather compensation, pipe out that buffer, um, and that's and maybe take out these bending valves. That's basically it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're talking about a day's work, yeah. really, and not no parts. In fact, you're taking out parts. Yeah, yeah. So very, very simple. Maybe there is some uh, bits we can do together. So Simon's a heat geek. Um, what we're trying to do, so people aren't in this situation, sure. is we're going to start guaranteeing the system performance. So if we say it's going to be a scop of four, we, Heat Geek, are going to guarantee for any Heat Geeks that have installed, they're going to get a scop of four for their system after 365 days. If they don't, the Heat Geek's not going to pay for the repair, the installer's not going to. We're going to try and make sure we figure out what's wrong yeah. first. Do you know what? That's we will foot the bill. That's perfect. This problem that we've got with this LG mm. pump is that they're, they're into, this fridge is LG. Yeah. You know, they, there is so many different things, televisions and so on, 
they don't have the network of service engineers out there, do they? Uh, not really. really for scaling. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a uh, sort of ratchet type thing. That's yeah. kind of why we're going with Valent at the moment. They do have a network of uh, yeah. uh, installers. There are other brands out there, Visman, etc., that have a good sort of network to, to help with these kind of situations. Um, but all these things need to be taken into account. Really, it's the installer that needs to ensure this and that he's going to be around and not fold after just putting the system in. Right. That's kind of why HeatGeek exists. So we can be the sort of network aggregator uh, and the ones that are willing to put our, our sort of money where our mouth yeah, is yeah. on behalf of the installer yeah. so you've not just got one point of um, you know uh, yeah. reassurance yeah it's pretty you went around five or six years ago <laughs> it's fantastic because actually i think that adam and i started off you know at loggerheads if you like <clears throat> two ends of the spectrum mm. and now i think we're getting to the stage where we might yeah. even exchange christmas cards <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I bought a present, but I've already bought it. <laughs> and just before we go, I've just got to mention our newsletter, which is free. You can sign up for that. Thousands of people have already done it. And don't forget to check out the Heat Geek channel as well. <laughs>